All right, people, welcome back. More Daily Duel. So today is Wednesday, and that means that I am playing the DDDs. Probably for the last time, depending on the polls. Of course, the polls are up for January to February. So unless DDDs get voted on for an additional month, uh, they will be taken off, and you should begin the deck profile next Wednesday. But uh, besides that, uh, this video is actually a little bit different. This is actually an, uh, is, is an off recording. So what I want to discuss is uh, pretty important, I must say. It's actually pretty important. I don't want to get too distracted when it comes to dueling. I tried to record and duel at the same time, and I just could not get any good results. I couldn't get any good duels. So instead, I'm going to go ahead and uh, talk unrelated to what's happening in the uh, duel. So whatever you're seeing right on screen right now, just for uh, entertainment sake and watching. Uh, but it's mostly just a discussion. I do these uh, occasionally, and not very often, mostly in the final balance discussion that will be coming up uh, sometime around the end of the month, because I plan on putting my balance prediction up on the 1st of February. But there's actually one particular card that I want to discuss today and get your guys' opinion on it, because I think that there's a possibility that Konami will ban it. So, um, if you're not subscribed to him, uh, DPYGL actually put up a video and saying, should Initiary Beast be banned? And, you know, it's actually a pretty good topic to actually bring up. And I was like, well, I want some more opinions on it. So I decided to go ahead and comment in one of my uh videos asking his opinion, maybe if he could do a video of it. And, of course, um, instead of getting an intelligent conversation from his uh, viewers and supporters, I got the usual, oh, no, you know, um, it, you know it's good against the, the pendulums. Like, I understand that. And then people are like, oh, you're a fucking idiot. Like, of course, and, you know, the unintelligent stuff. So instead of having a uncivilized, unintelligent conversation with his viewers, I'm going to go ahead and have an intelligent conversation with my viewers. So uh, I can totally see the standpoint when it comes to Manchuria Beast being banned. And if it were to get banned on this upcoming list, I would not be surprised. So let's just go ahead and uh, talk about the pros and cons of Manchuria Beast. So, uh, of course, Naturia Beast, we all know what it does with the Earth Tuner and the uh, non-Earth Tuner. Uh, and pretty much, people are doing strategies such as uh, uh, Hat Tricker and running things like Glow Up Bulb and uh, that one x saber guy just to bust this out on their opponent and lock him down. And similar to Anti-Spell Fragrance, uh, it pretty much just stopped the entire game mechanic by negating spells. Uh, pretty much negating the pendulum mechanic that uh, unlike maybe like in the Klee era around there uh, Now it definitely seems like uh, they're trying to get into uh, The pendulum, you know in this this last set There's like what three pendulum based decks that has came out uh, that you know definitely Konami wants to promote and make a profit out of and while similar to uh, you know people trying to balance out both sides of the things they trying to just look at uh, just uh, hating on clearly uh, the most dominant deck while well, not even addressing, you know, uh, the clearly exploits that you can do. Now, uh, I'm all for, you know, siding out against the deck, you know, that's, that's fine. But when you completely lock down a mechanic like that, that's when it gets a little bit ridiculous. So, Maturian Beast, uh, 2200, it's not that high attack, but, you know, like I said, the evidence is not the absence of evidence. Uh, you pretty much mill the top two cards off of your deck to negate any spell. And... Do you nag off of this? No, of course not. You know, your resources are in your hand and your field, so when you're milling off the top of your deck, you take nothing. And, you know, you only gotta get a couple of good negates in, or just literally let it hit the field before your opponent just literally scoops up the, the duel. So, uh, let's go ahead and actually look at some of the precedents of uh, cards in this matter, and uh, see if we can maybe figure something out. So, Nutria Beast, the game and spell cards. Now, we have, of course, Royal Decree. Royal Decree is at three, and despite what people say sometimes in arguing, it doesn't seem like Konami's planning on banning Royal Decree anytime soon when it comes to negating uh, traps. You know, there's no problem. You, you know, there's a point where we're like, oh, you know, hit that Denko Sucker, you know, stepping on them uh, back row. Once again, Denko Sucker is still at three. So it seems like when it comes to stopping traps, Konami has no problem stopping traps. That's, that's fine, yeah. But there's a card that's actually similar to Royal Decree, but it saw spells instead of traps. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if you guys remember this card, but uh, uh, Imperial Order. Yeah. And where is their Imperial Order? Oh yeah, it's banned. Banned. And it's not like it's it's come off the list or went back on the list. It, we didn't try it. It got banned, and it's been banned since, I don't even know when it's been banned, but it's been banned for years, at least a decade. That card has been banned. And while uh, spell cards, they fade in and out of popularity, that card has always remained banned. And especially in this predominant time where these pendulums, this pendulum time, if that card wasn't banned, it would have been banned, definitely. So, uh, we, uh, keep that in mind. Royal Oppression, banned. 
Uh, spell cards are definitely one of the hardest cards to stop, you know, and we got things to stop monsters, we got things to stop traps, but spells? No, it's really difficult, it really is, and, uh, you know, uh, Maturia Beast showing its strength uh, when we're going to these pendulum-based formats uh, definitely shows that when it comes to stopping spells, it's just the power, the power. So, alright, we have a trap card that negates spells, it's banned, been banned for over a decade, let's go ahead and write that down as precedent, alright, 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 next topic. It's an extra deck monster. That that's the big one. That's the big one. Of course, when uh, you don't want to go to the extreme of banning uh, monsters that you don't have to, you know, uh, you know, generally argue like, hey, you know, maybe it can be semi-limited. Maybe it can be limited. So if you bring up that topic, they generally, I mean, they, maybe they play two, but you only really need to play one. Uh, you summon that Naturia Beast, and there's pretty much nothing you can do. You can't even throw the usual. All right, well, let me just throw the Regeki at it. Of course, you're gonna get that. So one is only being played and that's the problem when it comes to hitting things when they're from the extra deck is that you always have access to it as long as you can pull off the plays to make the card it will always be there waiting it there is no consistency when it comes to that monster you know it's not like oh you know if we lower the consistency down to one you know you won't have a chance to draw there that, that, that argument's not valid because of course it's in the extra deck and while there are cards that uh you know you know, it wouldn't be too terrible if you drew them, you know, if there was something like, uh, you know, when you try to compare a Lavalo Chain to, like, Mathematician, hey, you know, you have one Mathematician, you know, you, and while Mathematician sends, it's in your deck, you have a lower consistency chance of drawing it. Oh, Lavalo Chain, that's always in your extra deck, you always have access to it, so, therefore, go ahead and ban it, you don't have any access to it. The Chariot Beast would probably be in the same boat when it comes to, uh, where it would be hit to, to the point of, you only see that one, you don't need one, and you always have access to it, and things that are generally in the extra deck you have access to, uh, you can't literally lower its numbers, lower its consistency, it's always there, so you've got to ban it, so, there's no argument. Alright, uh, another argument. Shockmaster, Shockmaster, we gotta bring up Shockmaster, so, of course, uh, Shockmaster been banned in the TCG for a cool minute, at least going on, uh, upcoming three years now in the TCG, and recently banned in the OCG. Shockmaster, been able to go ahead and detach an extreme material to, uh, literally cause spell trap or monster effects, and that thing that is called cannot be played, uh, during the next turn. Alright, so, OCG took a long time to ban Shockmaster, while well, we banned it a long time ago, and... They should have uh, went with us, and I'm glad that they uh, realized that the card should have been banned a long time ago. Because, simply, uh, being able to simmer how you bust out that interior beast to, you know, stop the spells. You bust out that Shockmaster, detach your team material, call spells, your, pretty much, your opponent's pretty much lock the spells. Now, of course, Shockmaster can do other things like monster effects and traps as well. But that's, as you can tell, the predominant reason uh, why uh, Konami hit it. It's just because it's broad, sweeping negation. Uh, and the interior beast is pretty much in the same boat, you know, instead of being broad like that and stopping all of them for a temporary, I'm just, whenever you activate a spell card, I'm gonna go ahead and negate. And, uh, it's just really difficult to play under the restrictions when it, when your pendulum decks, which is of course the decks that Konami wants to promote, whether it be, you know, go ahead and, and pay money for them pendulum wizards, or hey, look, new dino mist, you wanna try this out and earn us some money, or, uh, you know, them, uh, affirmate, uh, affor Amforage? I, I don't even know the name of that deck. <laughs> uh, Amfor... Am... Amforphages? I don't know. I don't know. Just a no, more pendulum based deck that Konami is trying to promote. Uh, so you can see that it could definitely, with Nature Beast still being legal, it could definitely hurt their uh, progen, uh, profit margin. And, you know, I see both, uh, understand both sides, you know, the anti-meta, like, oh yeah, it hurts pendulum, so that's the best thing I got, uh, argued against, uh, you know, their, what, what they want to do when it comes to uh, keeping this card legal because it definitely hurt their problem. I mean, think about it. Well, let's go ahead and look at it from a profit margin standpoint. Uh, what does Konami earn off of Nature Beast? I mean, they really don't do anything with individual cells, and I mean, who's really buying anything that Nature Beast is in any kind of set that Konami's uh, selling to uh, markets? None. All right, all right, yeah, we'll agree on that. But what is the potential? That this this card count. If if there was simply a broad sweeping card that can stop, you know, uh, PP, and you can bust out that Naturia Beast with ease, and they're just gonna go ahead and scoop, then why should you, you know, pay money for the newer set? Why should you pay money for Burger Shadow and make, uh, you know, paper PP or Dino Mist or you know, or even Monarchs too? Even Monarch Structure Deck, you you kind of just drop that uh that Naturia Beast and you pretty much block all those spell cards. You know, they can definitely if they don't have the correct hand can lose to that as well. Why you spend all that money on them, uh, the, the new product that Konami wants to sell when you can just simply just make a kind of anti-meta Nature Beast drop deck and 
and earn Konami no money, you know? So, uh, that's definitely a standpoint that you can look at. Uh, now, another card that, uh, was discussed, because, uh, Ben Capital G did a stream, and I went ahead and, uh, asked him while he was streaming, because uh, I don't think he saw the comment, and I was flooded under his, uh, his, uh, his viewers and subscribers, uh, it's, it's much easier to ask him directly, I asked him, you know, what do you think? And he said, no, no, and I don't think that he was really thinking from a uh, money standpoint, uh, he was like, oh, well, it's just, you know, you just gotta work so hard to make it, and that's understandable, you really do, but is it worth the effort? Yes, it is. Uh, he brought up Anti-Spell Fragrance, and of course, Anti-Spell Fragrance is another card that you can argue that should be hit, and I'm totally in agreement with Anti-Spell Fragrance being hit. Uh, I thought that it was probably gonna get hit when around when Cleaves were, you know, doing their thing, that uh, they were gonna go ahead and hit it, just because it kind of stopped the mechanic of, uh, uh, pendulums and you know they're trying to promote it but like I said they weren't pr promoting pendulums as dominantly then as they are now now it's definitely like yeah we are pendulum back then it was just eh please now it's like pendulum 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 you know whether it be all the pendulums in this set or the pendulums in the next set you know it is pendulum time so since it is pendulum time uh, you know and especially since we've seen this card on the radar you know there's no way that Konami hasn't been you know looking at what decks win what decks top YCS's regionals all that and you know keep in mind and seeing all these decks definitely uh, uh, being hindered and the top decks such as uh, your pendulum magicians and your Pepe and all that stuff being hindered by this trap card that it just seems like uh, happened to just be a misstep anti-spell fragrance where pretty much you can't even play your pendulum scales because you can't set your pendulum monsters in the uh, scales so you pretty much can't play your deck uh, definitely a mistake, and uh, you know, let's discuss what, what Konami uh, hit this day. I, I believe that they're gonna go ahead and put it in the same boat as uh, you know, just those powerful floodgate trap cards that uh, definitely hurt, but uh, you know, it's inconsistent at one, so we're gonna go ahead and put it there. I think that it's gonna be put in the same boat as the skill drain and the vanities and the macrocosmos, so those cards that uh, yeah, they can, they can possibly hurt the meta, but at one, they might be fun, you know. So, I think that uh, Anti-Spell Fragrance will be limited, but unlike Naturium Beast, where you always have access to it in the extra deck, Anti-Spell Fragrance will probably just go ahead and be limited to one. So, Beast, uh, you know, you just it just affects the profit margin by so much, being able to go ahead and stop them traps, and uh, once again, we're going to go ahead and, and talk about a precedence to another card that I want to discuss, and that is the prevalence of the card getting hit. So, uh, another recent card that kind of locked down uh, things was uh, Dejin. You know, Dejin and Necros uh, locking shit down and uh, you can't play Yu-Gi-Oh! And, uh, I mean, if Necros really didn't take advantage of that card, if they, Necros never did anything that had to do with Dejin, they just played Necros as they were without slashing the Dejin and locking you down, do you think that Dejin would ever be hit? Of course not. If it's not on the radar, if Konami doesn't see if it's not prevalent enough, then Konami is not going to do anything about it, you know? Uh, you know, should Royal Magical Library be vamped? Yeah, it's, it's a Saki card. It's only played in some Saki shit, and we've seen it plenty of times doing some Saki shit. But has it been prevalent enough to be on the radar to the point where it needs to be addressed? No, you know? We were totally worried about that Chicken Race FTK OTK. Did it topple? I don't even think it topped once. Not even once. You know, we see it all the time. Maybe, uh, you know, unrated duels on DN or Dad Pro, or, or maybe you might see it at locals occasionally. Maybe you might see it at regionals or West. Yes, but does it top? Definitely not. Definitely not. But has the trade base been on the radar enough for Konami to recognize it? Of course it has. I mean, they even you know put up an article even talking about that X Saber guy being splashed in just for that specific case. Just for that specific case. I mean, sure, you can go ahead and if you have another monster, you can Trish, but why Trish? Why Trish? Especially on the first turn, why Trish and only pick something out of their hand? Because they're not going to have monsters in the graveyard or in the field unless they, like, you know, backseed you or something like that. Drop that Trish. Drop that Trish, you know? Uh, I mean, not drop the Trish. Drop, drop the Cherry Beast. Drop it first turn and lock them down. Scoop it up. Get, the, get that quick game in. No interaction with the player at all because ha, you're playing a Pendulum Biz deck and, of course, I'm not going to let you play any of your skills. No, of course not. Uh, the prevalence is there. The prevalence is there. And uh, uh, another argument that I'm definitely hearing from uh, some of the anti Nichiri Beast being banned is, uh, of course, uh, have answers, you know, have answers. And uh, once again, you know, uh, the evidence of absence, not the absence of evidence. And uh, with this game being so luck based, you may have the answers, you may not have the answers, and you know, that's a struggle, because I guess the same argument can be said for, you know, whether you should ban, you should have, they should have banned a gen, you know? Should you, should, should they ban a gen? Oh, have the answers. 
have the answers to handle the monster. So yeah, it's fair. In the same boat, you know, especially when one of the best cards to be able to get rid of monsters, i.e. Regeki. No, I'm just gonna stop that. Uh, and uh, you no, know, then pendulum based decks without being able to have the mechanic to pendulum summon to summon the multiple monsters to get out the monster to handle the, the cherry of these, it's really hard to get over, you know. I mean, what, you, your strongest normal summon is what, Skull Crow Bat Joker at 1800? That's not able to kill him, Cherry Beast. You can't set up your pendulum scale, you can't throw a Regeki at him. Uh, you know, and like I said, you, sure, like I said, it would be nice if you had the answers, and if you were to put this a perfect world of Yu-Gi-Oh! where you would have everything that you would ask for, and it's not luck-based at all, yeah, sure, you know, sure, you're gonna go ahead and drop down to Cherry Beast, well, you see, I'm gonna go ahead and have this, uh, you know, Archfiend, you know, eccentric, <laughs> you know, and uh, it seems like if this isn't your address, that eccentric will, uh, um, of course, eccentric is already an expensive card, it's a very popular card, it's already really great, eccentric, I mean, that's just another way to go ahead and uh, handle uh, situations like that, or maybe Ghost Over Snow Rabbit, where, uh, of course, Nature Beast has to be on the flip to resolve the effect, so uh, I could possibly see maybe possibly main decking multiple uh, eccentrics and multiple ghost or snow rabbits just to handle uh, just being locked down by beasts because you of course you don't want to just scoop up game one and lose it immediately just because your opponent just drops that nature beast it sucks so uh, while they will be playing answers to it because it's just not a card that you can go without addressing there's going to have to be a correction when it comes to the card in general. Uh, like I said, if that, if that was if it's true, where you just like ha, have the answer to it, uh, like I said, then the evidence absence would be the absence of evidence, and literally there would be no point of the ban list because you should just have the answer to it, you know? Like, oh yeah, you know, your opponent summoned Chaos Emperor, well, you should have had the Solemn Warning, your fault then, you know? It seems like you're you're blaming the player for being stuck in this situation without an answer, without this, in this luck-based game, than actually addressing the problem. So, I don't believe that's a valid argument, you know? When it comes to uh, situations of, you're stuck in against Naturia Beast, you're just stuck in it, and if you don't have the answers, then you just scoop it up and lose? That seems like a lot of like the Gen Lock to me. So, uh, in a similar fashion, I, like I said, would not be surprised if Konami just goes ahead and addresses that card, uh, just for the fact that it's going to be hurting their profit margin just by locking down spells. Uh, and once again, and the extra deck monsters, they, they can, they can. You, with you always having it in the toolbox, there is no consistency mean. Sure, there's a consistency mean to, uh, you know, how you're going to obtain the cards to make the Nature Beast, but those aren't really taken in consideration when it comes to busting it out. You know, and while it seems like, oh yeah, they went ahead and uh, banned the Lalo Chain, it seems like they're going to go after the Lalo Chain anyway, uh, because if you really think about it, if they would have banned the Lalo Chain, then they probably could have kept the gen, right? But no, they're going to handle the monster as well. So, uh, I mean, they're not going to go ahead and, what, ban Glow, glow Up Up again? No. They're not going to go ahead and hit that x Hyper guy, no. They're not going to hit King of the Feral Imps, no. But when you put all these cards together with the Hat Tricker and the King of the Feral Imps and being able to search out that x Hyper guy and drop that Nature of Beast, uh, it just seems like uh, maybe that's even a better play than you know, first turn infinity. Like, why go first turn infinity and set uh, then my solemn notice is back when I just go first turn beast and set out? Because uh, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Huh? If you if you have any threat to anything I do, Regeki, I'm gonna negate it. Of course, you can't have to, your, your pendulum scale. And even if you somehow miraculously bust out a monster that you're uh, my material beast, I'm just gonna hit you with that solemn warning, solemn strike. So you're gonna get wrecked. You now, so. Uh, it just seems like uh, when it comes to the more profitable side of things that it seems like it should be a legitimate answer in banning Nichiria Beast. Uh, there's no profit margin and it would just be another casualty card. It literally would just be another casualty card. Like, oh no, you we shouldn't ban, uh, you know, Brownick because Brownick is for Crystal Beast. I mean, Crystal Beast, hello. Uh, <laughs> Crystal Beast, yeah. Uh, ice barriers. So no, no, no. Let's not hit Biro because of ice barriers. But like I said, when uh, <laughs> you're taking advantage of it, and especially of uh, these broad decks of uh, uh, non-archetypal free range, uh, there's a cap to be had. And you know, it would suck. I know. I, I feel you, Nichiria players. You know, you love to go ahead and summon that uh, Nichiria beast. Uh, you know, I see it, you too, uh, Mr. Despots. I see you doing it too. But uh, when it hurts Konami's profit margin to the point where it can kind of sw uh, shift things in favor of more of like an uh, anti-meta uh, kind of play, especially in how broad, and especially when the meta can splash it in as well, uh, and it's hurting the profits, that's when you know that Konami's gonna, it's gonna be on Konami's radar. Because, uh, I mean, like I said, the same argument could be said for the Artifact Engine, where, yeah, her, her Hat was the top tier deck, but then it was also kind of hurting the sales and turning into like this 
a free range non archetypal thing and it was uh i wouldn't say swiftly handled but it was handled to the point eventually uh it's another thing that people want back is artifacts because they're like oh yeah it's anti-pendulum and it's just like oh yeah because totally konami's gonna bring back something that was bad then that'll be even worse now and hurt their profit why you know so uh, i just don't see them moving anything when it comes to that and like i said the artifact engine the, the hype it's just, you know if size wasn't a thing then that wouldn't even be relevant so have fun with that but like i said with the one raw attack the bite's not there not though i think they're gonna do anything with slides I, I really i tell you the truth i don't think the artifact engine is even on konami's radar they're like we handle morale attack we're moving on you know who cares uh size is there but once again it's kind of like just one of those single uh uh, uh consistent in your deck uh, uh kind of anti meta-ish cards it's not even prevalent but Nucheria beast from an anti-meta standpoint and a meta standpoint we've been seeing uh this card dropped plenty of times just being able to just drop out in your opponent first turn when you're paying when you're playing a pendulum based deck that konami's trying to promote and you win and like i said when it comes to negating spells that's a no-no you know will barkeon ever be negated i mean no no you know, like i said when it comes to negating traps when it comes to locking down in traps who cares but when it comes to negating spells especially uh, and this time period, when it comes to uh, setting up pendulum scales and doing your pendulum plays, yeah. So like I said, it just seems like a lot of people aren't looking at it from both angles, and uh, people are just having a hard time predicting, you know. But of course, you guys know that I look at it from every single angle, from the financial, from the anti-meta, to the meta, to the game state, to the profit margin. When I try to predict, I try to predict for getting into Konami's mind as close as I can. And I can totally see Konami doing this. Like I said, I would not be surprised on the next list we just seen a Cherry Beast banned, because <laughs> that's how they want it you know uh there, there's no uh arguing or disputing with konami there's no sitting down this is an arg because i, I bet arg would never even think about banning the cherry beast they're gonna sit down in the meeting and they're gonna be like no screw pepe we're gonna hit the shot at pepe and we're not gonna ban the cherry beast because we want the cherry beast uh, here so we can go ahead and have an answer to them while konami is like doesn't the cherry beast negate spells as in you set the pendulum scales and aren't people just busting that out and you know not even playing our game and people are quitting because they can't even play even if they wanted to like mm. that's it i'm not saying that they're not going to clear up a lot of other things but this is just another thing that's on the other side of the spectrum that i also think that konami's going to clear up like they're just going to go broadly and kind of just tweak things and i think uh banning of the beast is going to be one of the things that they're going to do along with uh limiting uh anti-spell fragrance uh, as just one of the things to, you know, sure, you have the answers to your pendulum, but this isn't the correct answer that Konami wants you to do. Uh, it's just going to lose some more profit, if anything, so, uh, yeah. Alright, I'm pretty much done. I think I talked about it and addressed everything. Uh, I wanted to go ahead and talk long enough to give you an efficient episode of Daily Duels, but also get my point across. So, I want to hear your guys' opinion of it. Uh, of course, my, uh... Uh, my final bandless talk, if it gets brought up, I mean, I probably won't talk about it again. The final bandless talk, I devoted an entire episode talking about it, so I'll probably just link it in the description of that video. But, uh, the final bandless talk is going to come up, like I said, sometime it's in January. You guys go ahead and tell me, uh, what you guys think will be on the next list, or, uh, just things that you want me to talk about topics wise. And then I literally just do a video similar to this one, except going over your things. And if it needs to be multiple, multi multiple videos, it has been in the past, you know, three, four parts, and that's fine as well. I'll get it done. And then, like I said, I like to, uh, get my balance predictions up around, uh, like a month before I predict it. It used to be like a month when, before the set. Uh, date, but we don't get those anymore. Like I said, I predict that the list will go sometime up in March, so I'll try to get my bonus up, uh, prediction up in February. I've already seen a nice handful of people's predictions and uh, discussed it with a handful of uh, my uh, uh, friends and stuff. And we went back and forth on a couple cards, so I, I do have a list prepared, but I would like to make sure that I didn't miss anything, so I want to get your guys' help as well. And of course, you guys always shape how I do things on my balance prediction as well. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be doing that soon. So, anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this Daily Duels. I hope that I play DDDs efficiently enough. Like I said, it'll probably be taken off soon. So, I hope that you guys enjoyed despite that. So, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for all the support. And I will see you guys tomorrow playing, ironically, a pendulum based deck, of course, Dynamis. And if my opponent uh, drops any Cheerio Beast on me, then I'm screwed. So, yeah. All right, people. Thanks for watching.